Hello again from Port of Vasco Renovations 2017 here in Denver, Colorado. My name is John Alexander from Mayo Clinic and I'm happy here to introduce Dr. Kurt Lurie, an advanced interventional cardiology fellow at, a, at Alberta Heart Institute who's presenting as a case on parallel stenting. Dr. Kurt Lurie. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Dr. Rahul Potluri, Interventional Fellow at Mazankowski Alberta Heart Institute. My case today is about parallel stenting. The full title of the case is Parallel Stenting for Instance Chronic Total Occlusion, a Successful Retrograde Subintimal Recanalization. I'd like to acknowledge Dr. Min Bo and all the other staff at the Mazankowski Alberta Heart Institute. So this is a case of a 58-year-old gentleman um, who had background history of hypertension and previous stenting of the RCA for stable angina in 2008. He represented in 2017 with CCS class 3 stable exertional angina. He had an echocardiogram which showed mildly impaired LV function with an ejection fraction of 45 to 50 percent and a nuclear perfusion scan showing a large area of inferior lateral ischemia which was reversible. He proceeded to have a coronary angiogram in February 2017, which showed that the RCA uh, stent was completely occluded. There was ISR of the previous mid to distal RCA stent. His ECG, a uh, little bit of inferior changes, but nothing too remarkable there. Uh, so we planned a retrograde uh, CTO PCR of the RCA in April 2017. We decided to go for the hybrid algorithm and we preferred a retrograde CTO option uh, after the dual injection pictures uh, because it was a long lesion in the RCA which actually started significantly before the previous stent and there was ISR CTO of the previous stent and we weren't sure in spite of the dual injection pictures as to where the lesion finished. So this picture shows you the RCA stent, which you can see in the distal RCA there, uh, but the CTO starts significant proximal to that, and uh, you can't really see the distal runoff. So we started off using the technique of retrograde septal surfing, as you can see in these two pictures, uh, using a Xion wire and a Corsair, long Corsair catheter. So the, we got to the retrograde, uh, we got through to the uh, RCA stent um, using the retrograde uh, wire and the uh, long Corsair microcatheter, but we couldn't get through the uh, stent uh, in a retrograde fashion. So what we did at this point was take an anti-grade wire approach whilst leaving the retrograde gear in place and using an anti-grade uh, shorter micro Corsair microcatheter tried to get an anti-grade approach into the ISR of the CTO, as you can see from the second picture here. Uh, we unfortunately were not successful in getting through, in, uh, through the cap anti-grade, so what we decided to do was continue with the Pilot 200 wire and go sub-intimal using the retrograde approach and also go sub-intimal using the anti-grade approach uh, as you can see from these two pictures here. And by advancing the Pilot 200 and the uh, long Corsair microcatheter, retrograde into the subintimal space proximally, and the anti-grade catheter into the subintimal space distally, we then did, performed a reverse cart procedure, um, as you can see from these two pictures here. So we then successfully ballooned, performed the reverse cart and externalized the uh, retrograde wire using a guide liner. Um, we obviously came back into the true lumen proximally, as you can see here, and we used a, a, a long wire to externalize. Uh, so from the uh, anti -grade, retrograde approach to the anti-grade approach all the way out. We performed IVUS to look at our stent and uh, the fact that we were in the subintimal space uh, with this approach and with the, the IVUS confirmed that the stent was in place and we were indeed uh, in the subintimal space. 
So we then proceeded to do balloon dilatation around the old stent. As you can see, the uh, previous stent is still in place, but we are now essentially dilating around the previous stent uh, in the subintimal space, back into true lumen distally and then back into true lumen proximally, as you can see from these two pictures. Um, and then this is the final result. So we proceeded to uh, balloon and then obviously just stented the entire vessel from distal in the subintimal space to the proximal true lumen around the previous RCA stent. And the final result looks obviously very good. So in summary, when at the time of doing this was one of the first cases of successful retrograde subintimal recanalization with parallel stenting for instant restenosis and the chronic total occlusion of an instant restenosis. It's obviously a very complex procedure, but using the hybrid algorithm for CTO and pre-preparation of the procedure planning, along with an expert operator, we managed to do the entire procedure with less than 100 mils of uh, contrast, three grays of radiation in one and a half hours, and uh, one of the main things that I want to take away from this procedure is that obviously this involves skills, um, you know, very advanced CTO skills that can be adapted to other uh, PCI that we'll do in future, such as wire escalation, microcatheter manipulation, and b being a friend of the subintimal space and using the subintimal space, um, which is kind of going against the uh, tr traditional teaching of PCI. And I think one of the main, main ways that we can do this is to be flexible and change approaches very quickly. If one thing's not working, we want to the next approach using the algorithm. And I think this was why we were successful in this place. Thank you. Rahul, what a, what a great case. Thank you. Yes, uh, I have a, just a couple of questions here for you. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, as you know, there's a, I see here that at least one of the guides uh, was uh, femoral. Uh, that's right, yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your experience that you're doing uh, by radio, radio femoral, both femorals? Uh, for this case and for most of your experience, uh, what's your approach at your center? So for this case, uh, we did femoral and radial. Um, we generally are doing femoral and radial, and femoral for the um, uh, anti-grade approach and radial for the retrograde approach. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's been our practice with pretty much all of our hybrid CTO uh, cases. Mm -hmm. um, I know that some people are talking about and in fact doing biradial approach for CTO. We haven't gotten onto that practice yet. I think if you are planning a biradial approach, it's not very easy because you'd want at least a seven French guide for an anti-grade approach, if not the ret uh, uh, for an anti-grade approach, if not the retrograde approach. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, I, I think trying to get seven French and a six French into biradial is going to be quite a challenge. But uh, in the appropriate patients, and perhaps it may be possible. Here you had uh, the radio. What French was this? One? Six French. A six French. Radio six French for radio the for the retrograde. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. And the other thing that uh, I was interested in is a very impressive uh, procedure duration. The yeah. radiation and the contrast. Are you using biplane or is this is a uh, single plane? No, this was single plane, but obviously I had one of the best operators in the world on retrograde CTO, on hybrid CTO, mm -hmm. Dr. Minbo, mm -hmm. um, who essentially was, uh, did most of the case. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, uh, you know, it's the hybrid algorithm that enables him to go quickly, you know, change the approaches very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, if something is not working, then, you know, just move on. Don't per persevere if one wire is not working for a few seconds, then switch to another wire. Um, Anti-grade is not working, switch to retrograde and so on. So I think that's what helps and necessarily with contrast, we don't need to keep taking pictures and actually it's detrimental, obviously, as you know, if you go uh, subintimal and you start puffing and giving contrast, you don't want to be doing that. Um, so there's no real need for too much contrast here. Mm -hmm. And you use, of course, some uh, intercoronal imaging in this, with IBIS in this case. Is that part of your routine practice as well for uh, stent optimization? And so for CTO, we don't routinely actually do it. Um, here we wanted to show that uh, the um, ISR, uh, uh, that the wire was truly in, in the sub-intimal sub space rather than through the stent, mm -hmm. and we showed the stent the true the strength was in the true lumen, but mm -hmm. the ibis catheter was in the subintimal space. So that's what we wanted to show here. But we don't routinely use it. Perfect. Well, great mm -hmm. case. Thank, Thank you, you for showing that to us. Thank you.